there it's pete with gci turf i hope you're having a great day today and um you know everything going on in the world right now the virus and all that i'm sure there are people that are angry at god uh, lots of questions why that kind of thing and sometimes that sparks anger uh, it's like maybe it's something undeserved or something like that and people get angry at god so at the end of the video uh, we'll do the grass first that way in case you don't want to hear it you can check out uh, I'm gonna share a personal story of mine uh, where I was absolutely furious with God livid and uh, I want to share with you how uh, I got to that point and and what the outcome was my bluegrass back here is really starting to come alive if you remember we did some weed control back here right and as i'm walking around looking guess what i don't see any weeds that one app remember i showed you one application where i fed the turf i put down my pre-emergent i also done my post-emergent there's something else and i can't remember but uh you get the point look at this weeds are checked out and gone for one application and that's where i pulled up some of those grassy weeds i still haven't had time to get some dirt i've actually got the dirt now and i'll fill those in after we do the workout here today now what i'm gonna do is show off this little machine right here this little small outlet mower and it's a little bit more than a mower it's a real mower Plus it's a deep thatcher, plus it's an aerator, plus it's all kinds of things. That one mower, you can have several different attachments uh, that go in it. They call them cartridges. So we'll change the cartridge out and put the, the turf rake is what they call it. It's a, it's a rake that gently rakes the turf. It's nowhere near as aggressive as a traditional type deep thatcher. And that's kind of what got me interested in it. The difference is with the outlet style turf rake the tines are very soft and flexible and flimsy uh, but still rigid enough to actually rake so we're going to rake this ground out rake this grass out see how much crap we get out of it then we're going to mow it then i'm going to aerate it here we are in the middle of april you're not supposed to aerate in april i know that's right but with this particular setup this particular system you can and you can go right back to playing in the yard or mowing it or whatever uh we'll get to that in a minute i'll show you that in just a second it's really cool so the first thing we need to do is take this cartridge out really simple i really hope i don't jack this up because the only time i've done it was that one time that they brought me the machine but you pull this pin out and this bar just kind of pops out you get this allen key with it and there's two allen head bolts right here that you pop loose don't want to lose those you want to come over here to the side and do the same thing there we go here's the easy part you just grab your reel pull it right out you can see right here what i was talking about see how the tines are kind of flimsy but yet they're just tough enough to do the job but they won't tear everything up then all you're gonna do is drop it in place, reverse, put the cover back on, put the two bolts back in, you're ready to go. So this first pass, let's leave the, the bagging system off. I wanna make a pass so you can get a good idea of what it actually is doing. And of course the machine comes with a bagger so you can collect the debris as you're going.
Now, as you can see, this is not necessarily thatch. I don't even think this particular part of the yard is going to have thatch simply because it hadn't been here long enough to create thatch, okay? <clears throat> but what this is, is it's some old dormant material that just really hadn't woke up good yet or may not wake up. That leaf blade may be dead and it's just basically getting some of that brown and some of that yucky out of the yard. Something else that this is gonna do for me is in most all yards, not every single leaf blade is gonna be growing up. Some of them are gonna kinda get tucked down in there and kinda get up under the canopy and really can't come out and shine. So what this is gonna do is lift those up so that I can cut the grass more evenly. All my grass blades will be the same height if that makes any sense. So look at all that brown material I pulled out of there. Yeah, it's a little bit of good grass blades in there. It's not much, though. but look at all the brown that's in there. All right, so now that I got it raked up pretty good, I'm gonna raise it back up to about a half inch. I'm gonna give it a quick mow before I aerate it. So I ended up raking it three times, I believe, and mowing it twice. When I raked it, it kind of pulled up a lot of that material and stood the grass up and I had to double cut it to make sure it was good and clean. Now what I'm gonna do is go get my big brother to that, the, the little mower, and it's got an aerating attachment on it, which is super cool because I can aerate and then not leave all those cores and plugs in the yard. Well, that thing right there is pretty nasty looking. That's about all I'm going to say about that. Look at these little spikes right here. They're not quite as big around as a pencil. They look to be about an inch and a half or two inches long, roughly. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm going to do some aeration, which is poking a bunch of little holes in the ground. I'm not going to disturb the turf that's already here. I'm going to open up the ground a little bit, let some air get down in there and oxygen. My water's gonna penetrate a little bit better. I'm gonna fertilize this again when I get done and then water it in so everything's gonna get to the root system a lot quicker. So it's a pretty cool thing. I like this. First time I've ever used it. You see it doesn't have any dirt or anything on it. First time I've used it. So there you go, got it raked, I got it mowed down to a half inch, got it aerated, got it fertilized, and it's watering right now. Uh, we've already given it kind of the first feeding and got the weeds cleaned up and a pre-emergent and all that. And so moving forward for the rest of the year, I'm gonna kind of manage this bluegrass back here just like I did last year and kind of spoon feed it a little bit as I go uh, simply because we're in a, a really hot climate during the summer. I don't want to overfeed it. I just want to give it just enough to keep it going strong and healthy. And uh, I'm going to keep it at a half inch to see if the GCI Blue Heat can, can withstand a summer in North Carolina. Cut it a half inch. So we'll see how that goes. And again, the only reason I'm doing all this with this Allet Reel Mower is I like to learn. Okay, it's a totally completely different way of lawn care, the raking and aerating and all that periodically. And uh, I just simply like to learn to do new things. So that's really the only reason I'm doing it. And of course, this is again gonna give me a good idea how I'm going to approach my lawn care when all this right here is uh, the GCI Turf Blue Heat this fall. So if you're here for the grass, I appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you for taking your time out of your day. Uh, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Get on my email list. Uh, we've got to change that date, that May 1st giveaway. We're giving away five strong battery power sprayers to five different winners. They're out of stock. It's due to the virus. So a company called and bought every one that they had and put them way behind schedule on their deliveries and all that. So here's the deal. The new, new rule is as soon as they're back in stock, we'll draw the winner. 
They've told me it's going to be around the middle to end of May, roughly. So it's only a few more, you know, a month more that you'll have to wait. I apologize. Totally completely out of my control. Nothing I can do about it. What I can do, though, is since we're going to have to prolong it, we'll throw in a nozzle assembly. The Strom nozzle assembly for each uh, winter will go with the sprayer. Again, I apologize for that. Totally and completely out of my control. Nothing I can do about it. So uh, we'll just work with what we're handed, right? So email list, subscribe to the channel. You get in the drawing and five people are going to win uh, as soon as they're back in stock. So again, I appreciate you taking your time out of your day. And uh, for you guys that are ready, ready to check out, I'll see you later. So the question is, believer or not? Have you ever been angry at God? I know if you don't believe, how can you be angry at God? So uh, I've heard it before. With everything going on, uh, <clears throat> virus and all, uh, people have questions, right? And sometimes when those questions aren't answered immediately, give me your answer right away. People get angry. I mean, I did. I really did. And, and I want to kind of walk you through a situation that happened in my life eight nine years ago uh, right before my son was born this was this was pre uh my son being born uh and and how i dealt with that how i handled that and how god worked in my life through that to make my faith stronger so we're going to go all the way back this was before Jax was a thought okay Jax is my son my eight-year-old son uh, special needs type child uh, lots of things going on in his body, uh, some pretty severe medical conditions. Uh, he's good to go right now. God has really blessed us with an incredibly uh, amazing child, and we're very thankful for that. Uh, and, and not at all throwing my other two kids under the bus. <laughs> Man, I got a great family. God has been really, really good. To, I, I should use the word family instead of just child. But this specific instance is talking about uh, my youngest son. So my wife comes home one day and says, hey, I'm pregnant. And I was like, "Woo, another one, let's go. You know, the typical thing happens when you go to the doctor and you do this and you do that, all the checkups and all that kind of thing. We're kind of cruising along through that whole process. And then all of a sudden we get a phone call and uh, the, the doc, Tammy's doctor on the other end said, hey, the blood work is not right. So at first, you know, she comes home and she's a little on, on edge and she's like, you know, the blood work's not right. And, and you know, me being the guy who just kind of, eh, it'll be okay. You know, that kind of attitude. And um, we, we kind of not really dismissed it, but we kind of slid it over to the side and, and put it in our back pocket and forgot about it. And I said, well, let's just see what happens, see where this goes. And so after some more testing and that kind of thing, that is when we actually found out that, that my son uh, originally was, uh, and don't quote me on this, I'd have to ask her to be sure, and I probably should have asked her, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure it was missing three ribs and one vertebrae. You know, the things in your spine. One vertebrae, three ribs. That was the original diagnosis uh, based off the blood work while my son was still in my wife's belly, right? And of course, you know the story when he was actually born, it was way worse than that. It ended up being uh, over half of his right rib cage just wasn't even there. And uh, the rest of the rib cage that was there was kind of mangled and looked like a claw and it was squeezing his lung and suffocating his lung. And then his little spine looked like an S, real severe scoliosis. And of course, all that's fixed right now with titanium rods and things like that. But so he, so he ended up coming out worse than what originally was planned. So but I want to take you back. This is before he was born. And, I, and it's kind of building up. You know, everybody in the community knows that, that Pete, Pete and Tammy's uh, child is going to be born. He's going to be a little different and that kind of thing. Okay. Now this was about four days before my youngest son was born, the one we're talking about. And we get a phone call and uh, we find out some devastating news. I mean, news that 
no, you just don't want to tell a mom and dad. We just had an ultrasound that week right before, okay, and they took some really good clear pictures and, and they, they called us and they said, this ain't right. And, 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 and you know, us not being educated in the medical field, my wife used to be a nurse, so she was, but me not, they're throwing these terms out. And I'm like, what the heck, man? Uh, ambiguous genitalia and words like anal atresia and things like that. And these are basically, uh, to my understanding, they're fancy words for uh, the child's gonna be born and you don't know what it is because it don't have what it's supposed to have down here. Okay, you know, that kind of, that whole gender identity crap, well, this, this is a real deal gender identity thing because it just didn't have what it's supposed to have down here and it was very clear and evident on the uh, x-rays that it was looking right there at the spot and there's just nothing there no girl part no boy part they don't know what it is so of course going up to surgery uh they they had all this huge medical team lined up in the operating room in it when they were going to do the c-section and all that and obviously uh things worked out okay he come out and he had his little tallywhacker right there and he was a little boy and he peed all over everything i absolutely loved it and it was just a joyous moment uh that you cannot imagine okay you just i can't explain the joy uh for me and my wife both and not to and not counting the 50 people in the waiting room my pastor my parents grandparents uh my wife's everybody was there and when I come running down the hall and said it's a boy it's a boy and because they all knew the situation leading up to that it was just an incredible time so where in the world did I get mad at all this how did I get angry at God about three days before the scheduled c-section that was kind of when we really got that that bomb dropped on us that we didn't know if Jax was going to be a boy or a girl and, and my, here's my thought process on that is I've been a born again believer and, and following Christ for over 20 years now. I've, I've, I've studied the word. I've been diligent. I've been faithful with my money. I've been telling people about Christ. I've been uh, living out a life that honors and glorifies God. And God gave me a child that was broken. And I was angry. I was furious with God, irate. I mean, I could almost take the gloves off and go toe to toe with him. I was how frustrated and how mad I was with the God of the universe that he would take somebody that has been faithful to him and hand him some broken child that I didn't deserve. That was, that was my thought process in the entire uh, situation. God, why? Why did you give me a child like this when I don't deserve it? I deserve a healthy child. I deserve a child that don't inconvenience me. I deserve a child that can grow up like any other child on the face of the planet that's healthy. Why did you do this to me, God, after I've done everything you've asked me to do to the best of my ability? Man, you're talking about hot because I was, at that point in time, and I still am, I was dialed into my faith. I was dialed in. I want my life to be about Christ. But yet Christ put something on my plate that I didn't like. Okay? He made it inconvenient for me, in other words. That was the third day before the C-section. Day number two before the C-section, uh, I spent all day at work. And I'm still just boiling mad. I mean, you couldn't even talk to me because I was just totally and completely pissed off at God. The whole day, I'm calling, looking for answers. I'm calling my pastor. I'm calling uh, my good friends at church, some godly men. I'm calling friends that don't even know Jesus. I'm calling my parents. I'm calling everybody I know why I'm at work saying, hey, why? Can somebody give me a flipping reason why I get this kid that's all busted up? And somebody down the road 
that don't even care anything about Christ, or don't believe or anything, how come they get the perfectly healthy child? Nobody can give me an answer. Trust God, trust his will, his will's perfect, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. And I had lost that little bit of faith right there. See, what happened was I let Satan creep in. That's what I did. I let Satan creep in and tell me a bold-faced lie. Well, it was the end of the day, and, and I was just, I was exhausted mentally from being angry at God. I really was, and I pulled in the driveway, I'm sitting right there in my pickup truck and the phone rings. And I look over at the phone, the phone says Waco, Texas. And I'm like, what the heck, man? It must be a get your Google business listing right or something like that. Don't ask me why I picked the telephone up, but I did. I picked the telephone up and I answered, said hello. And it was a, a live man on the other end and the gentleman was from Waco, Texas, and it was a business phone call. And I don't know if you've ever heard of the Grounds guys. They're kind of a franchising type company. It's, they're like, the, the Grounds guys are like a big company, and they franchise out little smaller lawn care companies, and you become a Grounds guys franchise, franchise or whatever you call that. And so that's, I don't, I mean, I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the way that goes. So he told me who it was, what it was about. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, business phone call. Maybe this will take my mind off of it. Maybe this will take my mind off of the C-section and my child being born. And so I start talking to him a little bit. And we get about two or three minutes into the conversation. And he asked me some personal questions about my family. And I tell him about my wife and our marriage and all that. And I tell him about my other two kids. And uh, I tell him about my child getting ready to be born. And when I told him that, I lost it. I lost it on the phone with him because I was so uh, pent up. I, was, I had so much frustration and anger inside of me. I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in no more. I just had to let it go. And he just so happened to be on the other end to catch it. And here I'm like, I can't even get a word out because I'm, I'm, I'm just, I've lost it on the phone with him. And I get calmed down. I'm telling him about my son. And of course, that's probably more than he needed to know. He stopped me from talking. He said, Pete, do you mind if I pray for you? I said, what? What do you mean pray for me? And he just wanted to encourage me. He wanted to pray over me. And he did, right there out loud on the phone, sitting in my driveway right up there at the end of the day. And when he was praying, it was as if God himself were speaking directly to me. We just, we didn't, we didn't talk about business anymore. Uh, we, we, we got to praising the Lord right there on the phone well, from a dude from Waco, Texas. And um, the point of this is God's timing is always perfect. God's will is always perfect. God's plan is always perfect, whether we trust it or not. See, I was in that situation. I didn't trust God because I was too busy being pissed off at God because he gave me some broken child. Little did I know that when, after this child was gonna be born, God was gonna use this child to change the lives of hundreds and even thousands of people. I had no clue that was around the corner, but God did. And I was too sorry to trust it. So what are the chances that I'm having the worst day in my entire life ever? And at the very moment I'm about to explode, a man from Waco, Texas, I have no clue who he is, calls me and prays for me and encourages me and speaks truth to me on the phone. And that joker's 2,000 miles away from me. I don't know how far is Texas away. 2,000 miles, however far it is. That's a long way. What is the coincidence as some people call it, that that might happen at the very point in time in history when I'm about to freaking lose my mind. 
It's not a coincidence. God already knew that phone call was going to happen and put Pete in his place and put Pete back on track. So I walked in the house and I was a different man. A calm had come over me. I walked in, I hugged my wife. I said, you're not going to believe what just happened. Told her the whole story. I hugged her, kissed her, said, I love you. I said, look, God has got this. God is in control. God is going to give us every single thing we need with this child. We will not want, and we haven't. So I hope that's encouraging. Sorry, I get a little emotional on this stuff because when, it, when those thoughts kind of come back to you, 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 you look back on time and see, man, God really is good. <laughs> He really and truly is good amidst any, all the stuff that's going on. So if you're angry at God, if you're, you're pissed off like I was, I was furious, man. You just don't know I was ready to fight him. Don't listen to the lie. Don't let Satan deceive you like he deceived me. This is a 20-year veteran in the gospel, and that easy one day I let Satan slip in and take over. Trust the Lord. Know that he's got this. Know that he is in control, no matter how many viruses that might be floating around. He's got it. Trust him that his will is perfect, his way is perfect, his plan is perfect, and he is all sovereign, all powerful, and all knowing. And he's gonna give you exactly what you need to get through this and through any other trouble you have in life. So, hey, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for taking time out of your day. It's, it's really been an honor to be able to share some of these things with you that's happened in my life. And man, I've got some more to share with you. And um, the reason I'm sharing it is I want to encourage that person that may be looking for an answer. Jesus is the answer. There isn't another one. It just, that it don't exist. Christ is the answer for eternal life, for your salvation, for my salvation and salvation of the world. Put him first. Trust him today. I'll check you later.